So, miracles. News about Jesus spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures and the paralyzed, and he healed them. That should be a normal occurrence in the lives of every Christian on the planet. And if it's not, then we are way less than what God intends for us to be. Our purpose is to set people free. I want you to compare the two towns of Capernaum with Nazareth. Because in Capernaum, good things happened, but in Nazareth, not much. As it says in these two verses here, in Matthew and Mark, Jesus did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. And it also says they could not do, he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Because they said, but we know this guy. There was a familiarity problem. But we need to know God enough to know what the miracles will do. Philip Yancey said this, Jesus never met a disease he could not cure, a birth defect he couldn't reverse, a demon he couldn't exorcise. But he did meet skeptics he couldn't convince, and sinners he could not convert. <laughs> I wonder which of those might be relevant to you. 2,000 years ago, paganism ruled the Roman Empire and legalism ruled religion. Now paganism and secular humanism rule the world and legalism and the spirit of religion rule the church. So it's the same problem. It's just now there are more Christians. After 2,000 years, there are more followers of Jesus Christ. Now in some places, God is allowed to work and he does with signs following. In other places, unbelief reigns. For miracles to occur, we require both the sovereignty of God and the faithfulness and obedient actions and will of mankind. Okay, no gender involved in this. Look at this in Mark 16, one of my favorite uh, passages of scripture. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. So what signs are following you? Okay, think about that. In Mark 16, it says this, just a couple of verses further on. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it, or in the old King James, in signs that followed. So, God is also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. So he's sovereign, according to Hebrews 2.4. He will do whatever he wants to do, but he wants to do a lot more than we're letting him at the moment. Unbelief is probably the most significant sin in the church, and I use that term very advisedly. Experience tells us the combined infestation of Freemasonry, secular humanism, and the working of the spirit of religion are the primary causes for a lack of miracles and for unbelief to simply permeate uh, most church congregations. Going back to Guillermo Prain, in such times as these, one of the ministries of the church most violently attacked by the forces of evil is that of miracles. This is so because a ministry of miracles is a powerful weapon that defeats the enemy and sets people free to live an abundant life. The devil desperately wants to suffocate the church so that it cannot fulfill the command of God to minister miracles to humanity and through this ministry to impact the world. As it says in 2 Corinthians 4, even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing because the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ or Messiah who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord 
and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. So, even though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine dunamis power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Let me finish this part with a comment from Gajumo Prane. Miracles are tools God has given us for opening hearts that they may come to know Christ Jesus as Saviour. The primary keys are simple. Effective intercession, or spiritual warfare, if you like to call it that, for communities. Deliverance, healing, other miracles for individuals, and the proclamation of who Jesus really is and what he's done for us. Miracles break the oppression of darkness. They're like battering rams that open the gates of hell, tearing down the strongholds of evil. Once this happens, when hearts start opening to the power of God, the word can come with clarity. Jesus' answer to the doubts of John the Baptist was clear and striking. John, who was in prison, was questioning whether Jesus was the one who would come. And Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Notice again the order of the actions as Jesus related to them. First miracles, and then the preaching of the word. And that's a a quote from Gajermo Prane. They locate the enemy's strongholds. Then they attack it in prayer in the invisible realm, and they match it with visible miracles and witnessing in that area. Significant victories have been won, and more are coming. Their desire and goal is to see Jesus fill their city with his glory. So let me finish with a couple of statements here. We need to start to move without haste, but without pause. Get a fix on what it is we need to do and start to do it. Let me also say the brave don't live forever, but the cautious don't live at all. And there's a lot of cautious people sitting in pews or on a membership role of a church. And lastly, when the Christians are healed and made whole, the world will get saved.